Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. We're going to hit a lot of CJ stuff today. And I'm going to answer some questions that I've been getting a lot in the last couple of weeks in the parts department because we are a little bit low on staff. So I've been helping out. Yes, and I'm right back into helping the guys up front on parts. So I'm going to go back and show you how to decode your axle ratio. Very, very common question. A lot of people don't know. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the two easy ways to do it. Then we're going to hit on what I believe may be the rarest color ever put on a CJ, period. We have one here. And but let's start out real quick on a, on a JT Gladiator, or 2020. It's on the Black Mountain side of things. We do have the bumpers in stock for the JLs and the JTs, the 18s to the 2020s. This is our stage one, our 8,000 pound winch. And these are our wheels that are specifically made for JK and JL and JT. This is our 17 inch Black Mountain Five Star Alloy. And we're the only company out there that has them in white powder coat, which I think is super cool. Gives the old style vintage look. So this will be done today. We just did a leveling kit to make the Jeep sit right. 35 inch tires, 17 inch wheels, stage one bumper to winch. Just totally transforms the JT. All right, come on back, let's hit on CJ's. So you can see we did finally find some correct Levi's material. We had a big bolt of it. We just did two complete sets of seats. And if you look in here, now these seats would be correct for 76 to 78 in that it actually says Levi's on the button in 1979, they don't. And we actually found some real Levi's jean tags. And yes, we have these in stock and no, we don't have the buttons in stock. So we've got one of the sets of seats is going in this beautiful 77 CJ5 which we hit on last week as an interim Jeep because it's got a 78 cal and 77 fuel fill in the back. And here's the back seat for it. This Jeep's just gonna be stunning. Really coming along well. And one other neat thing we came up with recently, we've tried and tried and tried, and this has driven me crazy, but we finally solved the issue. Paint for an engine. You see these guys doing these really nice restorations, including us sometimes, and they try Ford blue, they try corporate blue, they try Pontiac blue, and most of them end up using the improper color of AMC, which is kind of bluish green. It's got a lot of metallic in it. Here is the correct 1973 to 81 AMC engine blue. Thank you, KBS, we finally got it right. We have seven different companies in there that have tried this for us, including mixing their own color and shooting it out of a gun. Never got it right, this is right. And we did the minimum order, which was uh, huge. So we have got hundreds of cans of these if you want to have your motor the actually correct color. This is the right color for 73 to 81 for the V8 and the six cylinder. And then in 82, they went to black, which we also have high heat engine coat, the proper color black for that. Now here's the Golden Eagle, it's come along great. The rocker motors are here. We do have the stripe kit on, which we carefully, carefully measure. This decal is such a beautiful decal and should only be put on by a pro. We've done a ton of them, but if you don't know how to do it, I'd highly recommend you have a shop do it. Such a cool focal point. Now we've got a 1980 CJ7. Some of you guys are gonna cringe, but we have to do this. This is a rust-free Texas Jeep that had been parked since 1993. Now, unfortunately it's outside and got kind of weather faded, but it had hard top and hard doors on it, so the tub was beautifully protected. A couple things I want to show you. When you're dealing with your axle ratio, the easiest way to find it, because a lot of times you need to know this when you're buying parts, is on the front differential, your tag is right here. Now we're going to try to, we'll get a focus in on this and show it to you. If that tag is there, that makes things very, very easy. This particular one is a 307. Now, if that tag is gone, you can come to the back. And this is a model 20 which are 76 to 86 rear ends. The majority of them were Model 20s. The Dana 44 in that time frame was only offered in 1986. If you look on the back, you've got a flat spot here, which again, we'll show on the camera. There's an X on this. Now, X is very unusual. It doesn't even pop up on most charts. It's unusual that this one's sitting here, but X is a 307. It's a single letter X code. If this was a double letter X code, it would mean that it had a locking differential, which means it had a, it had a uh, 
it's not true positive track, but it's a limited slip. So when the tires start slipping, they grab, and that's really desirable with a CJ. Another way that you might inclination that you're going to have the locking differential on the back, or not inclination, it'll show you that you have it, is here's the glove box door out of this Jeep. You can't see the stickers, but I've had enough of these to know. There's three of them here. That was your tire inflation. That was your toe. That was your axle. If it had the track lock differential would be another decal. Just so happen to have a Jeep out here that I'm going to show you that's got it. So we'll get, get around here with the camera. I got the glove box door down. So here's the one that actually has that decal I'm referring to. It says this car is equipped with a locking type differential. So that's neat. I mean, if you're truly going to four wheel your Jeep, it's nice to have a locking differential in the back. Now we're going to go ahead and post a chart for you guys to look at so you can see what your code is on the back and figure out what your differential gears is. I'm hoping to have that up on the site today. Now there's another thing I want to touch bases on are the different VIN tags. So from 76 to 79, you had them on your dash. I just see this Jeep right here. So from 76 to 79, they were on the dash. And boy, this just happens to be a beautiful example. They were right here. Then in 1980, they changed the style of decal and went inside the driver's quarter panel. And that was used from 80 to 81. And then 82, they went to the long decal, which we have in production now, to 86. Now, we, we'll hit on this seat real quick, too. This is a 79. We'll just look at it, and you can see that it doesn't have a Levi's tag on it, and it doesn't have Levi's on the buttons, and this is a really short mile on its Jeep. So we've got a, this blue 80 in here has got that VIN tag in there. Going to have to get up in the ladder show it to it. We've got an 81 behind it that also has the tag I referred to, but I'm going to show you how to check to see if you've got an original chassis under your Jeep. We're standing at the passenger rear of the Jeep. Most of the time you can see this number with the body on the Jeep. The body's off of this one, so this one will be easy to see. So when you walk up, they're all in this general area. Now these were hand hammered, so they're usually sloppy. They were not done with a gang. A gang is a square tool that all the numbers fit in and when you hit it, they're perfectly in line. These are never perfectly in line. So let's just say this Jeep was in a wrecking yard. I want to know what your frame this was. I would know right off the bat from where the shock mount is in the front, in the back, that it's going to be a 76 to an 81. But if I want to know what year it was, you walk up, it's always going to say J for Jeep. And then your second number is the year. This is a zero. So this is an 80. And then the last six digits of the VIN are right here. If you want to know if it matches, you take this and you go up to the firewall tag. Which is here. And you have a match. So it's a matching number, body, and frame. Now the color code on this is OJ, which is teal blue, which is super rare. We did part this Jeep out. Guys built a 1980 Golden Eagle, which we know is very significant. Because, Jess, I really, really need a good tub. I said, we, we really, really need them, too. However, we sold it to them. There's no rust in this body tub. It's great. Another thing to point out in the 1980s, it was the first year of the Dana 300 transfer case. As opposed to the Dana 20 from 76 to 79. You could tell that by this tall shifter coming through the floor. It was also the first year of the SR4 which is a terrible transmission. You could tell that, but you push down over for reverse. 8081, that was the weakest transmission ever put in the Jeep. The T-150 was a good transmission. And then in 81, you could have also gotten the T-176 is what you want. But in 8081, it had an SR4, which is the least desirable transmission. This one's got it. Um, but this is a rust-free frame that somebody's gonna love to get. We got a good core motor. Good Dana 300, drive shafts, good front and rear diffs, 307 gears, disc brakes if somebody's gonna upgrade an early one. Now this is one I'm super excited about. I love rare stuff, I love low production, and I love unusual colors. Now, through time, if you knew somebody, you could special order stuff, and we actually, through the Black Mountain Division, even get to special order brand new Jeeps. Somebody was able to special order color code FF. When I first got a phone call on this Jeep, guy says, hey, I've got a color code FF and it's not in any of the books. What is that? I was like, what is it on? I mean, is this on a Cuda, a Challenger, a Charger, Roadrunner? What is it? No, it's on an 81 CJ7. I'm like, wow, send me a picture of the tag. I, I need to see that. So if you look on the firewall, we've got our trim tag and it's correct. It's real. 
color code FF in the VINs on there, which by the way, in 1981 was the first year that you had your exposed 17 digit VIN on the dash. That's when the federally, that's when the federal government mandated that for everybody. And that's why you can only run a Carfax or 81 and up Jeeps. 1980 actually did have the plate here for the VIN tag, but didn't start putting it on there yet. So if we pull that 80 down, this plate's here, but it never had a VIN tag there. So there was never an exposed VIN in 1980. Anyways, back to color code FF. It's pink. So this Jeep left the factory in pink. How cool is that? I've never seen one. I've heard that there were some done in 79 for Playboy. Don't think this was done for Playboy. So we actually tracked down the original owner. He said, no, when I got this Jeep at the dealership, it was pink and it had a pink Panther on the hood and a special stripe kit. I've got some faded out old pictures of it, but obviously that's the way we're gonna go. And you can look inside here, you peel up the carpets, and you're gonna see that 8081 style VIN sticker, but you're also gonna see the pink in the floor. So obviously we're gonna do justice to this Jeep, take it completely apart, do a full restoration. So does anybody else out there have any information on an 81 CJ that was factory color code FF pink? I'd like to know how many were built, if this is the only one, or somebody pulled it off and got a handful of them. Never seen one. So there you go, we got axle codes, we got VIN decals, we got super rare color, got some killer restorations going on, and we got the right color engine paint. Please like, tag, share, and follow. Y'all have a great day.